So Death Watch as an independent faction in Warhammer 40k appears to be gone, replaced by the new Imperial agents, where it looks like you'll be able to field some but a heavily slims down list of their options, and it might have all sorts of implications for how well their support is. Let's talk about Death Watch in general, Games Workshop's moves with them, and what they're doing now, and just how bad it's looking for players who already have an established army. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought I'd do a video focusing on Death Watch, the fact that the Games Workshop seem to be really quite radically reinterpreting, and what could be a very painful move for current collectors. I certainly argue that the news isn't all bad, it's certainly kind of disastrous for some players out there, and I thought it would be worth talking through all the possible ramifications. As we found out on Monday with Games Workshop's announcement of Codex Imperial Agents, Basically, Index Death Watch is going to go away, seemingly with a good bunch of their current unique units, and also lose them access to a bunch of Space Marine things as well, at least when you're playing with the core Death Watch rules. Codex Imperial Agents will now give you basically two different ways to play with them, either in an Ordo Xenos detachment, which might have some similarities to the Black Spear, or as an allied contingent, with a few kill teams joining another army, and if you join Space Marines then you can make an army that sort of looks like the one that you had before. It does genuinely look like there's some fun possibilities for a new Ordo Xenos type army to represent them in game, but it could be painful for people with established Death Watch collections, particularly if they do remove the mixed primaris kill teams, as seems kind of likely to me. We'll get onto that in a second. But it basically all seems to be a bit to do with the debate as to whether or not Games Workshop wants Death Watch to be a full army or sort of allied force, as they do really seem to reinterpret them each edition quite a lot. Obviously for the actual news bits the information is still a bit early days, and we won't have full confirmation until we actually see the codexes, though a lot of things from their preview articles seem very clear, and we can infer quite a bit more. Death Watch had been a thing in Warhammer 40k for quite a long time back in the lore, generally referred to as kill teams of Space Marine veterans working together drawn from lots of chapters to greater defeat threats of Xenos, and specialist techniques to take down the alien in one way or another. They first launched around 2016 with a Death Watch Overkill box where they had Kill Team Cassius facing off against the Gene Stealer Colts, both of these kind of new factions to Warhammer 40k, even if they were maybe a bit slow to get going, and Games Workshop came out with more individual releases for them later. They started kind of basically, but then Games Workshop followed up with that flexible multi-part veterans kit, the Watchmaster and Captain Artemis, the Corvus Blackstar Flyer and the Upgrade Sprue, and then since then have basically not really given them any real support whatsoever. They did get a combat patrol in the more recent 40k era, though literally every faction did, and the Death Watch was arguably one of the very worst out of them. Just completely standard Primaris with a Death Watch shoulder pad, and not a particularly great selection on the Primaris front in my opinion. It did kind of feel like Death Watch were a Space Marine army that didn't do quite as well as Games Workshop were hoping they might, at least in terms of sales and followings compared with other armies. They've often been ranking amongst the very least played factions in Warhammer 40k, probably partly due to a small miniature range and lack of support. Might be a bit of chicken and egg, but they didn't even get a Primaris miniature release from 8th edition even when all the other Divergent chapters did. They did get their own standalone codexes in 7th edition, 8th edition and 9th edition, and then 9th edition was a codex supplement to Space Marines, giving access to all the units in the army. Speaking of which, they have had really quite a lot of style changes over the years. I saw a post on Reddit a while back where they referred to the each edition snapping off and rearming of their Death Watch veterans, as the loadouts that you could use them with changed, and the optimal stuff changed a lot. In 8th edition they had Stormbolter spam, with basically special issue ammunition being the way to go for their codex. Then in 9th edition that became far less relevant, and they had some interesting big synergy special rules with combat doctrine manipulation, and things like borrowing other chapter tactics to advance and charge. They could be a weirdly good melee army with tanky units and heavy thunder hammers and things. In 9th edition they also gained access to basically all Space Marine units, kind of turning them from an army of individual kill teams with guns, into basically another Space Marine chapter in feel, at least with the army that you could play with them, and maybe not hugely in line with their previous lore. Then in 10th edition they had a brief stint where they've kind of overpowered, first with a very dodgy devastating wounds combo they could do, and then with putting their detachment and special issue ammo stratagems on desolation marines weirdly enough, then that was nerfed, and since then they've been largely competitively unplayed, not completely underpowered and useless for a casual games, at least with a strong list played well but they've been considered one of the weakest factions in the game for a while now. All the way up to this point, they've certainly felt like a faction where Games Workshop don't really know exactly what they want them to be, 
so I've changed the formula in quite big ways each edition. Now though, as mentioned, it looks like Index and Codex Death Watch will both be going away, and the new book to represent them will be Imperial Agents. I've seen some people still a bit confused as to whether or not that's the case, but they have made it pretty clear. They've removed supporting things like the Death Watch Combat Patrol and Index cards, very much showing that this book is meant to replace those. The Death Watch unit datasheets will be in the book, and Games Workshop don't generally tend to have two active versions of the same datasheet in 10th. If they were going to be used as more general allies for that book until their codex came out, they'd be in a digital index now and not going into this book. And also in that article, they both talked about Death Watch and Grey Knights, and they specifically talked about Grey Knights and confirmed that they're not going to be rolled into the book, and they're going to have their own standalone codex, but Death Watch got no such qualification. In the 10th edition codex releases, quite a lot of units without specific models or kits have gone to Warhammer Legends, and it looks like, from the article at least so far, we've only got four units confirmed to survive, which quite a lot of people are believing that these will be the only units for Death Watch in the Codex Imperial Agents. This does seem kind of likely at this point, though we certainly don't have final confirmation yet. In any case, the Watchmaster, Chorus Black Star, Captain Artemis, and the standard Death Watch veterans, maybe renamed Death Watch Kill Team, will be in the book, and then everything else is either almost definitely gone or a question mark. Kill Team Cassius is probably the one that I might hold out the most hope for, given that they actually have a model kit. I certainly hope that these guys remain playable for the Death Watch, as they are pretty spectacular miniatures, really quite a lot of theme and flavour, and basically feel like an entire box set worth of characters. The veteran bikers are certainly gone, standard Space Marines lost their normal bikers, so it certainly stands to reason that these all go too. And I wouldn't be too optimistic about the Death Watch Terminators surviving as well, their thing was to have multiple mixed loadouts with things like Thunderhammers and Power Fist and Storm Bolters all within the same squad, plus the option to get three heavy weapons, and that's just not represented by any one Games Workshop kit currently. I would have said they'd be very unlikely to survive the Death Watch Codex update in 10th edition, never mind the fact that they're being made into agents now. The biggest current question mark is whether or not the mixed model Primaris kill teams will go, and I guess also the Firstborn Proteus one. Currently they've got three different units of these, one in more standard sort of Tacticus armour, and one in Gravis and one in Phobos. Really quite a cool and unusually flexible idea. Mixed models from a whole bunch of primary squads working together to take down the enemy. They've been present for the Death Watch for a couple of editions now, and have basically had rules rewrites for exactly how they work, and what units that you can take within the squad each time an edition has been updated. And the worry with them is that they basically don't have any sort of single model kit that represents them, and in general, Games Workshop throughout 10th edition has basically been going through each army. If they don't actually sell a model kit for that specific unit, then that unit generally gets removed as the standard rule. It's happened to quite a lot of other units that basically use their kit in a slightly unusual way. And it does look like Death Watch probably have the most to lose by that rule. In the article, Games Workshop were unhelpfully a bit ambiguous. They made this statement at the top. The roster has been expanded with Death Watch kill teams joining the retinue list. That one referring to Codex Imperial agents and the rest of new squads that they can field that can work as allies to other armies. Unfortunately, it's just kind of ambiguous. When they say kill teams plural, it could mean literally all the kill team variants that they have right now. Or it could just be talking about multiple copies of the Death Watch kit. They're called veterans at the moment, but could happily see them being renamed kill team. And they could be referring to that in the same sort of way as you'd say... Death Watch veteran squads are joining the rest of the new list, you'd still say it with a plural. It seems that in general, in online debates, most people are suspecting that the Primaris kill teams will go away between this and other clues. In a channel poll I did, it looks like around about two thirds of you think that Death Watch will lose access to these mixed Primaris kill teams. And there are also another couple of clues as well. The mixed Primaris kill teams have been completely excluded from the last couple of recent balance updates. They're generally considered really weak units, so there wouldn't really be any reason that Games Workshop wouldn't adjust the points cost for them. But in the last balance update, we had Captain Artemis, the Watchmaster, and the Death Watch veterans drop down in cost, but literally nothing else was altered. There's been a lot of discussion about rumours that were shared by Chapter Master Valrak, suggesting that they will not be in the Codex. And in fact, the only four Death Watch units that will be there will be the Watchmaster, Black Star, Captain Artemis, and Death Watch veterans. Between all that, I would say that it's probably looking odds-on that the Primaris mixed kill teams will likely go to Warhammer Legends. 
Obviously can't be 100% certain about that yet, but at the moment I'd be a bit more surprised if we found out that they'd remained. Obviously it'd be good news if so for all the people who have built up the Primaris kill teams as they are currently. It'd just be super painful for them if they went to Legends and were just completely mothballed from any future balance updates or anything like that. This would be a pretty brutal case of Games Workshop effectively removing plenty of people's armies from the competitive game and pairing Death Watch right back to just the core models that are actually theme for Death Watch that they sell. You could still use the miniatures, perhaps in an allied army with Death Watch plus Space Marines, though not everyone might have wound up building up full squads that you can field as Space Marine units, and that choice does look like it might have issues. Otherwise, from the article that Games Workshop shares, we've got a pretty good idea as to how Death Watch will be fielded, basically having three different options with how to play the army. First up, they can be fielded in any of the four detachments out of the Agents of the Imperium book, and out of these it just stands to reason that the Ordo Xenos is going to give them the most support. From what they said, it sounds like Malleus and Hereticus will have a lot of buffs tailor locked to just certain units, so they might just be a bit extra and unsupported there and the fleet one will give them a bit of general support, but less things tailored towards their specific data sheets. I'd guess that the Ordo Xenos attachment will probably keep at least some spirit of the previous Death Watch Blackspear detachment. I'd guess we'll get some sort of flavour of their mission tactics, teleport tricks, and special issue ammo. Though whether or not there might be a few bits of more general inquisitorial stuff to support that, we'll wait and see. If they were just reduced to literally the Death Watch veterans kit, I'd guess they'd probably be battle line. I certainly hope so in the Ordo Xenos detachment, and if so I guess you could put at least 60 bodies worth of black power armour on the table, which should be kind of adequate from a raw numbers point of view. In terms of things that you could have to support them though, if you fielded them like this you wouldn't be able to access any Primaris models whatsoever. So if you've got a whole bunch of Death Watch squads with say aggressors with Death Watch shoulder pads, or the same for intercessors or your Spectrus kill teams and things, you wouldn't be able to field them if they're being played like this, unless you manage to have them stand in for veteran kill teams. All this is presuming that the Primaris kill teams are indeed gone of course. On the flip side they would gain access to a bunch of things as well. You could take any of the units from the Imperial Agents in good quantities if you wanted. Lots of Inquisitors, Retinues and various other Imperial units. Could be fun to have them running alongside some Inquisitors in Chimeras with their Retinues, as it does make sense that they'd work in concert with them. Either way though, they'd certainly lose access to Space Marine tanks and vehicles. So say if you had a Death Watch Redemptor Dreadnought or Gladiator Lancer or something, you wouldn't be able to field those in this, and that would be a very major upheaval. I would kind of suck for people collecting them if you wanted to use tailored Death Watch rules. If you did want to use core Space Marine units and run them as Death Watch, then Games Workshop's article suggested using the Assigned Agents, Imperial Agents type rule, basically to fill Death Watch as allies. And this one would essentially wind up with you being able to, say, take a 2,000 point army list, take two retinue units, so I guess two Death Watch kill teams there, two character units, so say maybe a Watchmaster and Captain Artemis there, and make up the rest of the army through core Space Marine data sheets, things like Terminators, Intercessors, and all the rest. And then the rest of that Space Marine force would use one of the Space Marine detachments from Codex Space Marines, so like Gladius or Firestorm or something. With this rule set, you wouldn't be able to field the Corvus Black Star in this list unless they have the forethoughts to give it the dedicated transport tag. Fingers crossed they've done that, otherwise they might have just locked out one of Death Watch's only units from this allied role. I guess we'll have to see the full rules for Death Watch and if there's any other addendums for fielding them alongside Adeptus Astartes. If they actually want to use detachment rules and things, they need to have the Adeptus Astartes keyword, which I'd hope they might be able to have alongside Imperial Agents, though we'll wait and see on that front. If Games Workshop did just lock them out of any synergy and just keep them as their own thing though, it would basically mean that Death Watch wouldn't necessarily be any better with Space Marines than they would with anyone else, and Space Marines wouldn't necessarily have any more reason to call upon them than other allies they could field, and that would maybe feel a bit disappointing if you've got the entire army painted up as Death Watch to have the most themed units sort of standing by a bit. Again, the details of this are a bit uncertain, and the fine print could be really important. Hopefully they manage to give a good amount of flavour to the overall offering. Finally, and a new option that I think would please a few people, is that it now looks like you can field an allied Death Watch kill team, in addition to plenty of other Imperial armies out there. So say, if you were collecting Astra Militarum, 
You'd now be able to throw in a contingent of Death Watch, maybe two squads and their character, or just the one squad if you wanted, to presumably do all your Xenos hunting goodness. This, if anything, does maybe feel a bit more in line with a lot of the lore of the Death Watch, more typically operating in small kill teams and forces, as opposed to entire armies of black-clad space marines with the Xenomortis shoulder pads fielded en masse. Basically, having literally every army be able to access them might make them kind of hard to balance, though. In general, Games Workshop doesn't really seem to like it from a balance point of view, if literally every single army wants to field one allied squad because it's really strong. Whenever that happens, the squad in question tends to attract nerfs. So basically, if they make Death Watch kill teams really good, then they'll get overplayed and nerfed. But if they do just wind up being a bit mediocre, they might not have enough raw punch and damage to carry themselves as a more independent army if you're fielding them in the Xenos detachment. I guess the solution to that would be for the Auto Xenos detachment to give some serious boosts to the Death Watch units it supports. Hopefully a strong core rule and some powerful stratagems, enough to take them from a sort of mid-unit to a genuinely scary one in that detachment. Overall, looks like it's going to be a time of massive upheaval for the Death Watch. I do feel that there are some positives to the whole changes, even if it is going to annoy a lot of current armies collectors. The new Auto Xenos detachment will be interesting, it seems kind of fun that you'll be able to fill them alongside Inquisitors and things now. And for certain armies that might have only had a limited amount of actual themed Death Watch veterans and maybe a Corvus Blackstar or something, it really doesn't look like the army's going to be hurt all that much. It is pretty cool to see Inquisition playable as an actual main faction in Warhammer 40k, even if they do feel a bit cobbled together at this point. And Death Watch will be playable as a full army if you want to, though it does look like they're going to have additional restrictions. Currently in 10th edition, Games Workshop haven't really been showing Death Watch a lot of love, so I guess this is one way of having a bit of a shake-up for them. And as mentioned, I feel like this new reinterpretation might be a bit closer to how you might expect Death Watch to operate in the lore. There have certainly been a fair few comments I've seen saying that they should probably have just been a sort of kill team add-on sort of force, as opposed to trying to force them into being an entire 40k army from the start. On the downside though, as mentioned, it does look like the change could be extremely painful for current Death Watch collectors with extensive collections, all set up for the way that things work at the moment. If the Primaris kill teams really do turn out being lost, it'll be a massive hit both to current collections and also just Death Watch flavour in general. It was quite cool having a bunch of Primaris operatives working together. And it would certainly take a lot less interest from the army if they really are just paired back to just the veterans kit. It'd be far more interesting to keep the Primaris around and then actually use balance passes to make them usable, interesting and strong in game. The absolute worst outcome will be if those Primaris kill teams go and then all the people have put loads of time, money and love into putting armies of them together suddenly have their collections turned to legends or have to make use of a slightly janky ally system to get them on the table that's probably going to be kind of suboptimal and not being able to fill them with the themed Death Watch rules. If that's the case then it really would be kind of bad. It basically feels like the issues have been created by Games Workshop dithering a bit as to whether or not they want Death Watch to be a standalone army. They did start out having really quite a limited unit roster just with their veterans and Corvus Black Stars and things and a fun Primaris kill team. Then they got pushed up to getting full Space Marine unit access as a supplement codex so lots of people built armies that would work with that. So now if Games Workshop kind of tries to return them back to the former case of affairs it's probably going to leave a lot of people's armies high and dry and either deeply suboptimal or just plain unusable in the state that they have them. Another concern out of the whole change is the future support that Death Watch will get, which almost certainly seems like it's going to be less if they're merely one part of a greater codex as opposed to a standalone army in themselves. At the moment it looks like Death Watch will be getting no new miniature for 10th edition due to the Imperial Agents release being Kotias. So not the best news for them that they didn't get any, say, Primaris Watchmaster or Artemis, or better yet, a Primaris Veteran Kill Team with updated sculpts. I guess it's not impossible at some point they might get a box set that's aimed at the Kill Team game mode. They do seem like the single faction that's most appropriate for that, if anything. From a rules point of view, though, it seems unlikely they'll be getting quite as much balanced attention from Games Workshop if they're not a standalone faction with their name on the cover. They certainly seem to be struggling enough for attention as it was, but say with the example of Harlequins for the Eldari, Games Workshop just doesn't really seem to treat them as their own army anymore and focuses on balancing Eldari and giving them support as opposed to helping the Harlequins. 
I'd guess the Harlequins will be getting a detachment in the Eldari Codex, but I guess it would just be one detachment as opposed to the three or so that they might have got if they had their own book. It also means that, say, if agents of the Imperium were kind of strong in their own right, maybe due to Grey Knights or Sisters using the Codex synergies to do well, then the actual Death Watch units might not attract as much attention in terms of balance updates and just be seen as the weak part of the Codex. I guess arguably from a support point of view, Games Workshop haven't really given Death Watch beyond the sort of minimum token support they've needed to for quite a while now. So I guess at worst, support probably isn't going to be much worse. Though it does seem to be unlikely to be better in the long term at least. With army interpretations, I guess it's also not impossible that Death Watch could come back in a future edition. Certainly not in 10th edition, though I guess 11th edition or onwards eventually. I'd guess this would only happen if Games Workshop did a really big release for the Death Watch, maybe doing a sort of Black Templar style redo of their entire range, doing Primaris Veterans and updating everything else that they have, not that it's all that much. I guess it depends on how popular Imperial Agents are and if Games Workshop decides to carry on fleshing that out as an entire thing and go with Inquisition with Death Watch support as the way to play them. Could just be quite nice to have some models released to support that entire playstyle for the future I guess. I feel like it's very likely that they will eventually revisit the Death Watch with new sculpts at some stage but it might still not be for a while yet. If and when that does ever happen, that'd be the most likely time that they'd ever get Force Faction support back. Though I must admit I'm not super optimistic. Can't help but think that probably Games Workshop will look at the entire release of Death Watch, say that they were an army that they put a little bit of effort into and just didn't really get that much reception back. Lots of people do collect them of course, but just a bit less than just about any other faction in 40k. So maybe it seems a bit more likely they might try and put their efforts towards other armies as a result. In any case though, let me know your thoughts. As I've mentioned a fair few times, it is kind of early days for information yet. I'll certainly be covering any other news and previews for the Death Watch and the Imperial Agents as we get them. Hopefully Games Workshop will be able to make the new playstyles interesting and have the Agents Codex land well. It would be really nice if it's still viable to field Death Watch both as allies and as a more central full army. Though I guess we'll have to wait and see whether or not that's the case. In any case, if you'd like to see more 40k news and speculation and things, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I do tend to post new videos most days. Finally, if you have been getting good value out of the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep the content coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, an automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening and I'll hope to see you guys next time.